first of all, thank you so much for uh, hopping on here for a few minutes this afternoon. I appreciate it. Great. Uh, been a been a fan. Watched you since uh, you were on One Life back in you know back in the day, thousands of years ago. <laughs> um. So let's kind of start at the beginning, and then we'll work up to the main reason we're here. You. Uh, you started on GL, correct? That was your first soap. Was it GL? So you're, so you're taking me way back. Yes, in 1986, I started on The Guiding Light, was there for four and a half years, then uh, went out to Los Angeles to try my life at, at bigger things and ended up back on daytime of One Life to Live in 1993 and was on uh, One Life to Live as Blair until it was canceled. And I went over and did a couple of episodes of General Hospital back when they were switching and crossing over. Um, but 10 years later, I get this call inviting me back to be Blair in Port Charles. I'm like, uh, okay, how are we going to wrap this up or tell this story in two episodes? But um, I'm, I did my best. So yeah, I was going to ask it. So it's only only a two episode appearance. Um, obviously, your former executive producer on One Life, now running the show at GH, was he the one that made the call and say, "Hey, let's let's bring Blair back for a couple episodes"? Yes, he sent me a, a voice message and I'm like going, "Okay, what's he want?" And and it was right before the writer strike happened, and so he said, "We've got this idea. I've got to run it past network." Uh, but there's possibly a writer strike pending. So then it happened and he called me back and said they've had to postpone this arc. And then like three weeks later, he said, okay, we're we're doing it. And can you come out and, and do this? And I said, absolutely. And I'm very happy. And, and, and the way that it's going to play out, it's very open-ended. You know, Blair, she uh, she can stir some trouble up in town. So if she can do that, It'll it'll be fun for me, and I think it'll be fun for the fans. So yeah, I mean we we know a little bit of what's going on. We know that you're coming back as Martin Gray, played by um, Michael Inate. Uh, Can you former... believe that? <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, you're going kind of going back to your roots because did you and Michael cross paths? Because I know AMC and One Life were both filmed in New York. Did you all cross paths back in the day as well? We crossed paths not on um, network television, but SoapNet did a thing um, called What If. Uh -huh. And so it's What If Blair Kramer Met Tad Martin. And we did this great little musical number. And that was fun. So I actually got to work with him under that umbrella. But, uh, you know, we've done so many events together, fan events, that I know I know him very well. And I was really honored to be to get to work with him and I'm going to I got to work with uh, Jane Elliott which I love as well I, I was going to ask I mean Jane Elliott a legend in the business you know been on GH for many many years on and off she's now back causing typical Tracy Quartermain trouble what was it like working with Jane so closely well Jane is one of my favorite actresses to watch I think she's so talented um, and she's also one of my favorite people so I was just tickled pink, you know, about four days before I was flying out. I texted her. He goes, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited to be working with you. She goes, I had to call Frank to find out if it, if you were going to be the one playing Blair. And I said, oh, I'm so excited. So, yeah, I'm I'm very happy. I think we've got really great scenes together. We're both uh, um, strong business women, And it's going to rub Martin the wrong way that we are actually having a, an adult beverage together, conspiring to to do something a little interesting. <laughs> I spoke to Walt Willie about a month or so ago when he started yeah. his comeback or whatever. He said he saw the writing on, you know, he and the rest of the cast members saw the writing on the wall a few months before it was actually announced. Can, was that the same for you guys on One Life as well? Actually, no. Everyone was rumored, it was rumored that All My Children was going to be canceled. But when they brought us all in and set us down, they said One Life to Live and All My Children. So we were a little, uh, sh we were shocked. 
and because it was there was no heads up about that whatsoever. Um, and it was interesting because our show at the time, One Like to Live, was n better in the ratings than General Hospital and All My Children. So we were like, huh. So we were a little gut punched. Um, took a while to get over that, but I'm still a little bitter. Can you tell? <laughs> um, how often do you keep in touch with your fellow other than your obvious husband, who I you all met, I assume, on set, correct? Because of the timing? Yes. Okay. Yes, we did. We, James, I'm the pilot performer, uh, Max Holden? Yes. Uh, Max and Blair were um, lovers. So, so on screen to off screen, right? That's right. That's right. And, um, I, you know, One Life to Live, it, it's always, it's going to be a huge part of my life forever because that's where I met my husband. It's where... You know, I, you, our my our my pregnancy was used in the storyline, and so it's kind of kind of crazy. But I keep in touch with Robin Strasser, who plays Dorian. She lives in Cleveland right now, and I stop in to visit her probably every six weeks on my way down to visit my mom down in Kentucky. So mm -hmm. I drive down with my dog. We we visit with Robin. She cooks for me and buys me little presents as if she's still Aunt Dorian, and it's just great. Uh, what about Kristen now? Because you were with Kristen from, I mean, she was, how old was she when she actually started the show? I mean, she was six years so old. Basically helped raise her through, she was at least a teenager, I know, when uh, when the show uh, was off the air. Oh, yeah. I, um, I love her like my own daughter. I mean, she is just a very special young lady. She's got exciting things happening in her life right now with engagements and um, she's so talented and we were so lucky to have that little Spitfire star um, just, you know, really made the Manning family light up with fireworks. What was it like getting back on set? Um, you know, a lot of these uh, actors that are on now you were with you know, back when you did your few episodes, what was what was it like getting back just on set, you know, on General Hospital? Well, walking on set, any set, even if it's Days of Our Lives, One Life to Live, Guiding Light, General Hospital, it's always very surreal to me, And but I love it. And I just feel at home there. So walking back on set, I was very nervous, of course, because it's been 10 years and a lot of water under that bridge for Blair and who is she now as a more mature, seasoned woman. Um, but I was in the middle of doing my scenes with uh, Jane Elliott when Roger Howarth walks up on set and it's like, oh, and I haven't seen him probably in 10 years. I mean, I've, you know, maybe I've talked to him on the phone or, but not, not, you know, laid eyes on him. So it, it's, it's a real bittersweet to see him because Todd and Blair, I mean, I was such a Todd and Blair fan. So, and I know that there are a lot of tea and beers out there. So that's what they call the Todd and Blair fans um, that I'm sure are going to be disappointed that I am not working, you know, alongside Todd, but Todd, you know, Roger is not Todd. Roger is Austin now. So there is an explanation for that. But if I can't have Roger Howarth, I'll be glad to take Jane Elliott and Michael E. Knight. I, I was going to ask you, uh, that had to have been a special moment, though, because, you know, I was talking with Marianne a little bit. You know, once we once she was able to tell, I kind of assumed what was going on, but she did, couldn't tell me fully until sure. you know, recently. Um, I, she's like, they did run into each other on set. There was big hugs and tears. I mean, didn't I assume a lot of members just started flooding back when you and Roger got back together just for just for that few minutes, I guess. Yeah, you know, it's um I looked over at him and he kind of patted his heart and I patted mine. But then I had like it's like, okay, now go away because I gotta work. I gotta do these scenes. You know, it's hard. I I equate coming on a, a soap for just a day or two is like jumping on a fast moving train because everyone on sets, all the crew, all the production staff, the actors, they're already in motion. So you walk in and kind of go, woohoo, grab me, let's go. 
and you know hopefully you don't get thrown off the train but <laughs> or run over by the train but i had a great time um i have you know i, I watch youtube and i watch old uh, todd and blair scenes and there's something really special about that pairing and it was written really beautiful and sometimes our best scenes are when we said absolutely nothing at all hard getting back into the blair character after so many years what did you say i'm sorry was it hard getting back into blair after so many years all right darren i'm going to tell you the truth it was hard getting back into those high heel shoes okay and putting on the tight skirt okay <laughs> All of a sudden, I've got to walk and talk and hold my stomach in at the same time. That's a tough thing to do <laughs> and be like charismatic and try to show some talent. But it was fun. I loved it. I love it. Just reminded me how much I miss One Life to Live. It reminded me of how much I miss working every day. I'm so used to working hard. Uh, so coming in and just doing tip, two episodes, I kind of get in my car afterwards and go, okay well, what am i doing tomorrow oh that's right i'm getting on a plane and heading back to new york but yeah i miss it i miss it a lot and um it's kind of exciting to 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 read twitter and facebook and i know that the fans are very excited and i'm sure they're going to be some as i said are disappointed that i won't be pairing up with todd this time but um it's i think that they're going to be happy Two, two last questions. One, um, I'll, you also you've obviously it's well documented. You went through some health issues back. You know, how are you feeling? Is everything going well with that? I am a hundred percent. Knock on wood. Yes, I uh, was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia back in July of 2016. I've been in remission ever since. Uh, had six months of very intensive chemotherapy. Um, I look back on it now and I can't even imagine that I went through it. It was um, a very hard time, but I, I had the love and support of my family. I had my faith and I had people that were praying for me every day. And obviously they must have had a, you know, a direct line to God because I'm still here. <laughs> Wonderful. And you, you know, you said that the door is open for more Blair on GH. Well, yeah, you got to well, let them know. Exactly. How would, um, how would you feel when, if Frank called and said, hey, come back, you know, another, you know, maybe a recurring role, maybe just a few more, a few more episodes. How would that make you feel? I would make me feel like a hundred bucks. It'd be great. So I would, I would love that. But if it doesn't happen, I understand. He's got a he's got a large cast. He's got a, a a very talented cast. But if I could just come in and play in the sandbox every now and then, I'd be I'd be happy. 